Bonjour et bienvenue à un nouvel épisode du Hat Historian, l'historien des chapeaux. Dans cette vidéo, je vais parler d'une coiffe qui est vue de par le monde comme emblématique de la France, le béret. The beret is firmly associated with my birth country of France throughout the world, and most particularly the English-speaking one. Just about every caricature of a Frenchman include a beret, often along with a baguette and a striped shirt, and it is true that it was once very popular and widespread throughout the country. Beyond its national stereotype associations, it is also linked to two groups that are rather different from each other, artists and the military. So let's see where this so français hat came from. As I've mentioned in my video on the flat cap, round woolen hats are nothing new, existing in Europe since the Greeks and Romans. Easy to manufacture, warm, cheap, and comfortable, this type of headwear appeared in many nations. Variants can be seen from the Scots and their tam o shanter to the Arabs with the Chechia, and many other in between. But it's the Pyrenees, the Béarn region specifically, that what we now know as the beret first appeared, as best we can tell around the 15th century. This area of the Pyrenees had a cold, mountainous climate, and was a center of sheep herding, and so its inhabitants, with ready access to wool, would make themselves felt caps, with a wide, flat shape, to protect themselves from the wind, rain, and snow, or to shade their head from the sun depending on the weather. According to a local legend, this practice goes all the way back to the biblical Noah, who found wool in the bottom of his ark that the animals had shed and trampled for the forty days of the deluge, turning it into felt and from which he made capes and hats. As poetic as this version might be, the real origin of the beret probably comes from the birus, a sort of wool hood that was popular in the late Roman Empire and stuck around in the cold mountain climate. The name evolved into the local Béarné dialect to beret, and finally to the French béret, from which the English word is taken, and continued to be applied to local woolen hats. These early berets were often made of rough felt, knitted from undyed wool and therefore tended to be an off-white or beige color, although with time various valleys began dyeing them in colors like blue or red, with symbolic connotations attached to each. As a side note, the little tab often seen at the top, known as the kabilu or the kudik in local dialect, is a remnant of when it was knitted by hand, being the extremity of the yarns used to knit the round shape. It is the same reason that tams or wool hats tend to have a pom-pom on the summit. With modern manufacturing, this extremity no longer exists, but a kabilu is sewn on nonetheless as decoration, and it is felt that a beret would not be a true beret without one. The hat was very popular amongst shepherds throughout Béarn, and around the 17th century, artisanal factories established in the vicinity of Oloron Saint Marie began manufacturing large numbers of berets, which were sold to surrounding regions such as the Landes, northern Spain, and the Basque Country, whose sailors were renowned throughout the world. But despite sometimes being known in France as the Béret Basque, due to Emperor Napoleon III mistakenly believing they were from there, and all of his advisors being too polite to correct him, its true origin is the Béarn. And while popular throughout the region and its neighbors, it remained localized in southwestern France for a long time. It is only in the 19th century that the Béret began to spread to the rest of the country. There are two main reasons for this spread, both linked to industrialization. Industrial manufacturers of berets made it a cheap product, affordable to even those who did not own sheep and couldn't make them themselves, and therefore could not have been able to acquire one before. This made it even more popular than before in the region. Furthermore, the Industrial Revolution drove many people from the countryside to the cities, and from the provinces to the capital. This brought the beret, originally a rural hat, to urban centers, and many Basques, Landais, Béarnais, emigrated to Paris, where they made it popular. From there, the style spread around the country. Much like the flat cap in England, the beret acquired a sort of working class connotation, being cheap, easy to roll into one's pocket when not working and not wearing it, and comfortable. Its popularity grew all over France throughout the 19th century, and it went from being a regional symbol to a national one. By now usually black or very dark blue, the beret became the headgear of choice of all those who had little disposable income but worked in cold conditions factory and construction workers, small artisans, and the like. It is also during that time that it acquired its association with artists. Some say that artists adopted it to try and emulate Renaissance artists like Rembrandt, who were sometimes depicting wearing a beret-like cap. But more realistically, 
There is the fact that however renowned the Monets, Cezannes, and Chagalls might be today, in their own time they were hardly wealthy and often worked in poorly heated studios. The starving artists therefore had a tendency to choose the cheap hat of the day, the beret. Subsequently, once their reputation was established, their followers imitated the masters and wore berets themselves, and the stereotype came to be. For a long time a man's hat, the beret was adopted by women in the late 20s and 30s, with feminine fashion of the day eschewing some old traditions, helped by the many actresses and style icons of the era. The beret continued to be a popular item of wear in Europe throughout World War II, during which it strongly became associated with the French Resistance. Resistance members wore berets because it was considered inconspicuous in France at the time rather than any patriotic reasons. Interestingly, this is said to have led another group to adopting it as a symbolic accessory, the Black Panther Party in the 1960s United States. Leader Bobby Seale purportedly came up with the idea after seeing French Resistance members wear it in a movie and, liking its distinctive and slightly revolutionary look, thought it would fit well with the appearance he wanted. Much more rarely worn today in everyday life, there is a group of people for whom the beret is a common piece of headgear and where it is adopted almost universally throughout the world. The military. The beret has a lot of attributes that make it attractive to the military. It is cheap to make, can be manufactured in many colors to differentiate branches, and can be rolled up and stored in a pocket without damage when not worn. A sort of beret was used by the Spanish in the early days of the Carlist Wars, influenced by the Basques hats, and the Tam O'Shanter was part of the uniforms of the British Army's Scottish regiments. But the first to make a modern beret their standard piece of headwear were the French Chasseurs Alpins, the Army's mountain troops, who wore a very wide Alpine-inspired beret. It is said it was supposed to be wide enough so that they could warm their feet in it if necessary. Then, with the introduction of combat helmets and the mechanization of war in World War I, tank units in France, then Britain, and subsequently Germany adopted berets. Often black to hide oil stains, it was liked because it took up little space and could be worn with headphones over it. The military beret became very popular with British troops during World War II, where it was adopted by airborne regiments and commando forces. Following the war, some American Special Forces units received berets as gifts from their British allies, that they would wear in an unofficial manner. Their wear would become official in the 1960s. The berets spread throughout the US forces after the Vietnam War as a morale boost for troops that were still suffering from a divisive conflict. The French, who had only used it for specialized units before, adopted it for all the troops for similar reasons after the Algerian War. Following the independence of the British and French colonial empires, a lot of these new countries adopted berets similar to their former colonizers for their armies, and elsewhere the prestige of the US military influenced other armies to do the same. The beret is by far the most common military hat today throughout the armies of the world, and can be found in almost every color imaginable, sometimes with countries imitating each other, such as green for elite units like the British Army Commandos, the US Army Green Berets, or the French Foreign Legion, or maroon for paratroopers. Often worn pulled to the right with the insignia over the left eye, either tied on the head in the British style or slightly more voluminous in the American style, the berets is sometimes worn pulled to the left with the insignia over the right eye, particularly in France and the countries it influenced. Russia and the countries it influenced tend to have their insignia centered on the forehead and the hat pulled to one side or the other depending on the occasion. Then there's whatever the Israelis are doing here. The side to which it's pulled is said for the British to have originated in the Tam O'Shanter's wear, where it was pulled to the right to keep it out of the way of rifles when shouldering arms, in the same way as the slouch hat I've previously mentioned. And for the French, who had very floppy berets, they pulled it to the left so that it would free up the right eye that was used to aim. Civilian wear of the beret has declined sharply, as it has for all hats, since the 1960s. It was seen as old-fashioned, unsophisticated, only worn by the elderly, just no longer fashionable. Despite this, it still has a fairly strong presence in southwestern France, its place of origin, where it enjoys a strong cultural attachment, and it is often worn during local cultural events or celebrations, and is still seen on the heads of a few diehards, particularly in the countryside. In the rest of France, it endures on the heads of fashionable urban women in cold weather, or on some older people and traditionalists. And of course it can be found in just about any souvenir shop in Paris, because tourists still associate it with France, though those versions are often poor in quality. And as I said earlier, it is also a handy indicator that a person is French in cartoons or caricatures. 
This image of the brilliant striped shirt wearing Frenchman, sort of what I'm wearing now, comes from England. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Breton onion farmers would often sail to England to sell their products, often traveling door to door. As poor rural folk of the time, they would often be wearing berets for the reasons I explained earlier, and they would often wear the traditional Breton marinière, a striped shirt. The average English townsperson of the time, for whom this might be the only interaction with an actual French person, assumed that's how all French dressed, and the stereotype was born. It spread to the rest of the English-speaking world, and after World War II, to the rest of the world, and endures to this day, even though very few French people actually dress this way in day-to-day -day life. Nonetheless, the beret still serves, outside its military life, as a potent and enduring symbol of France throughout the world. So I hope you found this video interesting and will join me again soon for another hat. Until then, I tip my hat to you.